Okay, get ready to snap because we're gonna, as soon as I snap, I need your thing on there, okay? Yep. You can have your finger on there. Say it again. 
First of all, I'm sitting down because of my bad hips. I get uh, uh, them operated on hopefully June, the first one, and then the next one after that. Um, um, uh, uh, that word audacity. The audacity of somebody getting up in front of, uh, like, the way we do church, I don't understand it, but, you know, we do it our best. It, the Bible doesn't say how to do church. They did some things, so we do those things. We, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They shared everything they had. You know, nobody had any need. And, uh, the, 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 you know, they, they, uh, uh, God gave them growth and, and led them, you know, and they were passionate. A lot of them got killed for their faith, but anyway. Um, the audacity of, you know, you coming here on a holiday and listening to uh, somebody talk. The audacity that somebody could actually get in front of you and tell you how to live. That's, I don't know about you, but I find that disgusting. Why would I do that? Why would I go listen to somebody? Who's he to tell me what, how to live? And if you're here uh, this afternoon and you're thinking, who is John Council that he can tell us how to live? You know what? You're probably bang on. That's what you should be thinking, okay? However, if what I give you is the Word of God, and there's dozens of people that have prayed that this would be the Word of God today, um, it's different. The rules are different, okay? It's not me. And I'm not trying to blow my... I am not, okay, I'm not worthy to stand before you. No man is, okay? But this seems to be the biblical pattern. We want to honor God, okay? God, if you want to change everything the way we do church, then we want to do what you want us to do. Lord, I pray you take your word. And God, I thank you again that you've given me something, God, that's given me the courage to stand before people, God. Because I know it's not me. God, you have given this to me, and I'm excited about it. And don't let me blow it, Lord, by being John Counsel, God. God, I just pray in the name of Jesus now, Lord, you would take over. And you would teach us by your spirit this morning in the name of this afternoon in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, you good? Okay. Um, you're gonna get a lot of scripture today. A lot of scripture. Now if somebody paid me a compliment this week. Okay. I'm not gonna tell you who, because they'd be embarrassed. But somebody said, We really like it that you give us the word. You're not telling us your opinion. You're not giving us psychology. We get the Bible. I took that as a compliment, okay? Now, sometimes when you're reading scripture, you get boring. Um, so I will do what I can, you know, to maybe throw things at you or, 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 or not, uh, you know, the, the, we've got to learn how to do this, okay? And, and uh, the, we see set out a pattern, we want to do it well, okay? What day is it? What is the title? Resurrection Sunday. You know, I find it, well, John, you're not really doing an Easter message. Are you kidding me? Remember that your Sabbath day to keep it holy. That's about the most Easter message you can do. And I didn't plan it to line it up in this 10-part series on the Ten Commandments like this. It just worked out this way. So here's the scripture. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do, labor, do all your work. On the seventh day is the Sabbath to your Lord God. On it you should do no any work, neither you nor your daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor your foreign residing here, residing in the towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all those in them, and he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Vocation. Okay? Huh? Vocation. What? Vocation. Oh yeah, he likes doing that, folks. He's got to fill in for our, my hecklers that aren't here today. Uh, <laughs> Exodus 28 to 11. It's on the screen, but that, you see, he tells me to do that because not everybody, can see, you can't see the screen when you watch the video, so I've got to repeat the, uh, 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 where it is. Now, I have to remind you of something. Somebody, some of you may not even know this, but i got to drive this home. The Sabbath is Saturday, okay? The Sabbath has always been Saturday. It always will be Saturday. Now, you need to know that there is no command anywhere in the Bible, Old Testament or New, okay, for us to meet on the first day of the week. Anywhere in the Bible. They did meet on Sunday to celebrate. But they didn't do it because it was a command. Okay? Sunday, here's another truth you've got to know, right at the outset, okay? There are some people that will preach in the Christian church that Sunday replaced the Sabbath day. That is not biblical. That is not true. That is not in the Word of God. Okay? The Sabbath is Saturday. You can't 
change that. Now, our attitude, and because of the resurrection, oh my goodness, the Sabbath has changed big time. And most Christians don't realize how, and we've got to correct that today, okay? There is no requirement in the New Testament for followers of Christ to meet on the Sabbath or on the Sunday. You got that? Nothing in the Bible says you've got to go to church on Sunday or Saturday. Okay? So you can all go. <laughs> like I said, both happen, but not because of commands. So we're going to get to the bottom of this now. Why? Okay? Go to Romans 14, 5 and 6. Romans 14, 5 and 6. One person considers, this is what the Bible does say about it. Most Christians for 2,000 years have ignored what the New Testament says about the Sabbath and about Sunday. And that's why we've turned into this stupid churchy thing instead of the, instead of the, the you know, the, the demon chasing hell, racing, and filling hell with fear, body of Christ. Okay? One person considers one day more sacred than the other. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should fully be convinced in their own mind. Doesn't say which one's right, does it? Wow. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. So there's people that do this that love God. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord. Okay, that's meat sacrificed to idols and meat that's not sacrificed to idols. There's both, okay? For they give thanks to God, and whoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. My goodness, let's go to the next one here. Colossians 2.16, some of you know this one. Therefore, you can almost put this right after the last one I just gave you, Colossians 2.16. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon, celebration, or a Sabbath day. Okay? Don't let any, look at, you know the word means do not let anybody impose on you a rule when it comes to this. Okay? There's a lot of people that follow Christ that can't really handle the freedom that God gives them. They've got to be told what to do. They got Everything's got to be defined for them. That's why the Word says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we know that word eleutheria. It really means where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is fun. There's release. There's joy. There's liberty. All those words that eleutheria entails in the original Greek there. These are matters, these are matters of where we meet on Sunday. They are not matters of, of, they're not legal, they're not moral, they're not spiritual, they're not biblical, they're not theological. They're matters of conscience. Conscience is not a bad thing. Conscience will save your life. <laughs> conscience, if you've got a good conscience, oh, thank God you have one. Because you don't want to hear, I'm not going to quote you what the Bible says about people who have let their consciences be seared. Oh, not good. Not not good at all. Let's go to Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4, 8 to 11. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would have spoken later about another day. There remains then, this is Bible now, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from His. Let us, this is important, look what it says, let us therefore make every effort, okay, to enter that rest, so that no one will perish by following the disobedience, the example of disobedience, okay? What's that entering that rest? It's accepting Christ in His grace. You don't have rest. What does he say? Come unto me, all you who are weary, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. you we get that, we get that by, by accepting Christ. That's the Sabbath rest. That, and I hope you can hear the Holy Spirit telling you, that is the replacement for the for for the, the legalism that was you better keep the Sabbath day holy. How do you keep the Sabbath day holy? By entering into this Sabbath rest. Because the law was fulfilled. Okay? We are no longer judged by the law. Oh sure, we do all sorts of things in the law because it's common sense. And we know that it's not common sense anymore. But we know that it will protect us from evil. And we know that we'll save ourselves a ton of a ton of pain. 
by simply being obedient to Him. We do not obey the Ten Commandments so we'll go to heaven. We obey the Ten Commandments because we love our God. Okay? And we want, we want, to, we want to please Dad. We are a lot of the family, but we love Dad. We love Dad. And we, we, we can never get enough of what He's done for us. And it fills us with joy, okay, to serve Him like that. For anyone who enters that rest also rests from their works just as God did, okay? So entering that rest, that's, that's simply becoming saved. Whoever enters rest from their works, okay? Now listen. Whoever enters rest from their works. In other words, I'm not working for my salvation anymore. I'm trusting Jesus, okay? The Word says the just shall live by faith, okay? The Word says that our salvation is not of works, okay? It's a free gift from God. The example of disobedience, the example of disobedience he talks about, that he warns the people about it, that's not believing. That's slipping back into legalistic service of God, okay? That's what the example of, dis of, of, of uh, uh, disobedience is, right there. And whoever wrote the book of Hebrews, I think it was Paul, he wrote it to the Jews, because they struggled with this more than anybody, man. They fool. Sabbath day. In fact, they believed after they came to Christ, they still had to keep the Sabbath day. He says, no. You've got to enter the Sabbath rest. That, that, has been, that has been done for you. The passion of the follower of Christ should not be keeping the Sabbath. Okay? It should be entering into that Sabbath rest. Because it says there, make every effort to enter into it. Not once do you hear anything in the Old or New Testament. Make every effort to make sure you're in church on the Sabbath. Doesn't say that. Okay? Make every effort to enter into that Sabbath rest that's been provided through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay? It's not works. It's living by faith. Okay? It's not about keeping the Sabbath. It's living by faith and not works. And you know what? That's good news. That's the gospel. Why do they call it good news? Because it's good news. You mean I don't have to work for my salvation? You mean there's a rest that I can rest for my labors and rest for my work and I don't have to work? Yes! Wow, you're kidding me. Most people don't realize how wonderful the good news is because the church does a horrible job representing the joy and the liberation that Jesus brings. Okay? And the, the greatest quenching of the Holy Spirit that the church does is making the gospel harder than Jesus. And taking the, this wondrous path of following Jesus to the power of his resurrection and codifying it. And categorizing it and saying, this is what you do. Then you got to do this. 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 Then you'll be okay. There is no follower of Christ that's smart enough to lay it out. You should see all the books you can get on discipleship. There are thousands of them. Go to Google this afternoon and tell you, books on discipleship. Pages. You know what discipleship is according to what Jesus laid down? It's as simple as this. Doing the will of God and letting somebody else watch. Wow. That doesn't even fill a whole sentence in a book. That's not going to make me any money. That's not going to put my name on a lot of YouTube videos. They're not going to invite me to preach, preach in churches and lead seminars at all. Why? Well, because that honors God. The rest of the stuff makes all kinds of money for pastors and preachers and guys that you don't know, realize, hey, we can make this be popular. You'll love it. This whole Christian marketplace of nonsense. Okay? That has quenched the Holy Spirit to the point that, you know, one of the best things about, about uh, 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 the testing and the refining of the church, there's so many Christian bookstores that have closed. You know? And, and look, I'm not judging. Some of them are wonderful people. I know that. Okay? But man, there's just as many people that are making, they're making a, a coin on, you know, like, uh, the Jesus stuff. Okay? And, and, you know, if they don't get the coin, they go out of business. Listen, the church of the living God will never go out of business. Okay? The church of the living God, I mean, you put, you put uh, Tesla and Microsoft and Apple and uh, every other company in the world that thinks it's hot shots, okay? I work for a corporation that makes all those corporations look like garage sales. Okay? God's as powerful as he's ever been. Okay? And we celebrate the rest that he's provided by entering into it. Some of you are not, you know what I mean, because you've accepted Christ. And you know the freedom that there is there, okay? And you, what you've experienced, you've got to share it with as many people as you can. Well, I'm not eloquent. I can't talk. 
They, listen, if you stumble, if you get your scriptures wrong, if they tie up an argument, let me tell you something. Right now, you will be more convincing to them than me, who knows all the scriptures, knows all the arguments. You see, people go listen to me because they say, well, that's your job. You get paid. Of course, you're going to believe that stuff. When they hear you stumbling through your scriptures, when they hear you stumbling through why you believe, and they tie you up in knots, they walk away going, man, there's nothing in it for them. There's got to be something there. And I can keep you hearing stories that, is, that have illustrated that. The people that, they hardly know anything, but they love Jesus. And the only thing that's in it for it is Jesus. That's why Ephesians 4.11 says, my job is to train you to do the ministry. Because you're going to be way more effective than me. Way more. The Sabbath rest. Okay, what is that? Uh, some of this you're not going to like. So I'm going to trust the Holy Spirit here. That means quieting your spirit and hearing God's. That means keeping the Sabbath holy for a follower of Christ who has entered into that rest by accepting Christ. What does that look like? Keeping the Sabbath holy. What does that look like? It means being. It means being what He's called you to do now that you're free in His grace. We talk a lot about doing. And you know, if you love God, you can obey Him. But I hope you know Him first. Because if you try, try obeying it without knowing him, you are going to burn out. You are going to burn out. And it is not going to be fun serving Jesus like he intended to be. He intends us to be. That's what the Sabbath is there for, okay? Hebrews 4, 9 to 10. Hebrews 4, 9 to 10. There, there it is again. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. It's not for everybody. It's for the people of God. It's the same promises. All things work together for good. Not for everybody. For the people who love God. And will enter that Sabbath rest and are called to his service, okay? For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Now, what does the rest of that look like for a follower of Christ? Where well, first of all, again, it's relaxed. It's relaxed. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. Come unto me, all you are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Real followers of Christ, it's hard to stress them out. Okay? We use this term triggered. Somebody that's really got that Sabbath rest, hard to trigger them. Hard to, go, woo, you know? Okay. Now, a bunch of you are getting embarrassed right now because a bunch of you I've seen you get triggered. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not trying to be good girls and boys, okay? I'm telling you, whatever triggers you, man, he can get you to the point where nothing triggers you anymore. And the only way you're triggered is by God triggering you. Whoa, I gotta respond to that need. Whoa, I gotta listen. I gotta go, go, go get praying. Oh, I gotta open the word. Oh, I gotta call so and so. Those are good triggers. Yeah. We gotta be pliable and flexible that God can get our attention so we're, we, we, we respond quickly. Okay? Those are good triggers. But those other triggers, it's relaxed. The next thing, John 16 and 33. In this world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. How do we let him overcome our world? We know he's overcome the world, but our world's got a lot of stuff. Boy, there's a lot of stuff I'd like to see overcome. How do we get him to overcome our world? Well, he needs to... <laughs> oh, God, help me. <laughs> he needs to overcome us. He is not going to be overcoming your world until he overcomes you. Okay? Well, I accept him as Lord. I've known people that have accepted Christ as their living Savior. And, you know, by all evidence in the Bible, they're saved. And they do some pretty raunchy things. Some pretty bad things. Why is that? Because, yeah, God saved them by grace. He said he'll save anybody. It's like the old story, you know, like, God loves you. And I always remind people, well, God loves me. Hell is filled with people that God loves. Okay? <laughs> that doesn't mean a lot. Yeah, you, 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 it's free. But you're going to be on this planet for the next 15, 25, 3 months. I don't know, okay? If I really have the, the, the presence of Jesus in my life, it says by your fruits you'll know them. I, I want the real deal. I want everything to get out of this. And he puts a little bit of responsibility on me. But, you know, he ne here's the best part of it. He will never ask me to do something that he won't give you the strength for. Amen. Don't Amen. ever approach the commands of God and the attitudes by saying, Oh, I can't do that. Nobody can. He told us that. In John 15, 5. So when you see something, the devil says, well, he said, you can't do that without him, so you may as well forget it. No! Okay, God, you want me to do this, and I can do all things through Christ. you got to help me. 
I know you can help me. I know you can do anything. Hey, let's push it even further. God can do anything through you. If you are overcome by Him, you can do things in the power of the Holy Spirit that your neighbors and your family and your loved ones will look at you and go, what got into them? Okay? And I, this is not pie in the sky stuff. I've seen too many who to thunk it, you'd never believe it in a million years type reusings of the Holy Spirit and people that I thought were the ultimate losers. I keep here all day. Okay? They, I have told you some stories. Okay? Sabbath rest. He needs to overcome us. He provides Sabbath rest in our lives. But we insist on having it our way. I don't have it my way. Oh, Burger King doesn't, you know, go to hell for promoting it. Have it your way, you know? <laughs> Man, that's our problem. Oh, John, you're being too hard. Proverbs 4, 12, 14, 12. There's a way that seems right to a man. Leads to death. Ew. Hard is deceitful above all things. Jeremiah 17, 9. Whether you're saved or not. Proverbs 3, 5. Probably the favorite of half the crowd here. Okay? Don't lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways so He will direct your paths. If you don't, you're going to go down that 14, 12 path of death. Okay? He says, look it. I'm here. I'm available. You want, it, you want him to overcome, he's got to overcome you. Here's a, here's a good prayer. Jesus, where are you not Lord of my life? <laughs> I hope you can handle the answer. <laughs> Don't be intimidated, because if he points something new, you know, he'll cut it up and he'll give you the strength. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's what he means when he says, you know, anybody who gives up in this life, they're going to receive... 30, 60, 100 fold. Everybody thinks, you know, cars and Cadillacs. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's cheap. Yeah, that's not even eternal. Okay? You're going to receive power like you didn't think was ever available. He's going to show you in ways that you're going to think of material things, so why would he even bother? What does it look like? Okay? When you venture in the stab with wrath, you're restored. Restored. Okay? Do it again there. We were created to live in a garden. That's what we're hardwired for. We're hardwired to live in a garden-like atmosphere. Okay? Now, anybody that's got a garden or even a couple plants on the balcony up on the apartment, they love to go up and retreat to their garden. Okay? They like to get recharged. And open communication with God with no distractions, with no technology. Put your phone in another room for an hour or whatever, okay? That, he's provided that, okay? Somebody that's in the Sabbath rest, they look like they're restored. They look like they've rested. The Ten Commandments, okay, their commands meant to bring freedom, to bring life. The Ten Commandments were meant to release this restored life into our lives, okay? That's what this one is here for, okay? This one, this keeping the Sabbath thing holy. In other words, entering into that Sabbath rest and realizing how holy it is and how much we need it and making every effort because it's holy and we need it. Okay? This one's there to protect us from burnout. Sometimes it can be manifest through one day a week, you know. Um, I mean, even to the best emotional therapist, you know, they will tell you, yeah, one day a week, get your head together. It's a good thing. Okay? We were designed for it. Now, uh, you ever seen this? You ever seen that? Anybody tell me what that is? It's not a clock. Anybody know what that is? This comes from the um, uh, mid-1700s. This is a calendar that was made by the leaders of the French Revolution who rebelled against God and they wanted to have a 10-day work week. Okay? And this is what they gave everybody. And they thought they could do it. You know what happened? The horses that pulled the carriages, the cows that got milked, all of the animals and livestock, they started dying. They started burning out because all of nature is on a seven-day cycle, they found out. And it burns the daylights out of them because they were preaching there is no God. Even carrier pigeons that sent messages were dropping from the sky so they could take a seven-day rest. It was on one five. Do you know all staggered? Okay? All of nature is designed for this. And these guys went the hard way. Okay? Next one. Dealing with the terrible T's. I'm tired, I'm tense, I'm tempted, I'm troubled, I'm torn. 
what in the world am I doing here right now? Tired. Tired. When you're tired, it leads to poor communication. Things get worse. Tempers get shorter. There's a dullness to God's voice, oh my goodness, and then things really get worse. When you're tired, you get your day of spiritual renewal. Tense, I'm up tight. Fuse is shorter. You know? There's the peace of patience. I know patience is a dirty word. You know, we don't like the word patience, but my goodness. You know, if patience ever stops intimidating you and you start seeing the value of it, you're in no peace. You are. You know? Little kids are impatient. All of us need to grow up in Jesus. And it's provided for us there. He will help us. Okay? Mark 2.27. It's not on the slide. Okay? Mark 2.27. The Sabbath. Jesus said this when they were giving him a hard time. Hey, you're not it. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. This is not show up to church, make sure you're in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, because that's what God requires. Even Jesus said, no, it's for us. To bring freedom and enter into rest and be in control of our lives instead of having our lives control us. Okay? Tempted. When you're tempted, your resistance will weaken if you're not recharged. Troubled. There's a public school teacher who failed miserably. I don't know what happened, but it was 1800s. Got fired. And he's overwhelmed with stress. Had a nervous breakdown, whatever a nervous breakdown looks like. Usually a nervous breakdown is, I can't handle this anymore, I'm going to freak. Okay? And he turned his back on God and uh, was humiliated. He left his home, left his family. He had just enough money to do a little bit of traveling. So he left his home in, 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 in England and wound it up getting God's perspective. <laughs> on things and not his own. And he ended up on the hills of Jerusalem, this is the 1800s, overlooking Bethlehem, which is about five, ten miles away. Okay, you can see Bethlehem in the distance, it was nighttime. And he wrote a song. Okay? You may have heard it. Oh little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. You look at those verses, boy. That's somebody that was broken and his life was over and he wrote something that glorified God that we've been singing for 175 years now. Not bad. What happened? He came back to God. Better than that, he came back to his family and his family came back to him. Torn. That's the other T word there. And I remind people of Romans 7. Torn. <laughs> You know what? If you think the only one that if you think you're the only one that's torn, you need to read Romans seven. Because the superintendent of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the Mediterranean Sea, he was known as Paul of Tarsus. He writes in Romans seven how messed up he is. You think you've got to have it together to serve God, okay? If anything, Paul realized how weak he was and how much he needed Jesus, and he did made every effort to labor into that rest, okay? Romans 7 shows the weakness of the soul. Instead of seizing what God has provided, Sabbath rest. And what happens, we, you know, when the Sabbath rest comes, you know, we, we wallow in our own excuses. And, and, you know, we use nobody's perfect, nobody's perfect. You know, I, I can't stop, because I have access to perfection. I don't think God's expecting me to be perfect. But when I have access to perfection, you at least... I think it's fair for him to, hey man, call on me. He even tells us, before we even know it, good call on me, I'll give this to you. I don't want you burned up, tense, and tempted, and torn, and all the other stuff. That's, yeah, you may be that way, but you don't have to be that way. Why did I rise from the dead for? You know, so we could sing everyone, you know, like the people never went to church except on Easter. Oh, that's a great reason to rise from the dead. I think it was a lot more than that. Best illustration, I think, of this is uh, Eric Liddell. And uh, we're getting to the point now where, how, where you and I are the only ones that understand the significance of that because uh, Eric Liddell was uh, the son of Scottish missionaries in the early 1900s, and uh, he, the guy could run like crazy. And he would never race on a Sunday because he was like, kept the Sabbath day, which is still legalistic. 
But Paul did say some people keep these days because they love God. You need to respect that. He was one of them. And it wasn't legalism. This guy loved God and trusted God. Even though it cost him. Well, circumstances led him all the way to the Olympics. And you know what happened. The guy won a gold medal in the Olympics. Even though that he did. Everybody watched. He was the guy that went around on Sunday. So the gospel was spread all over the world. Okay? Because he understood Sabbath rest. Okay? Martin Luther. Now, this is going to sound tough, but he would describe it as entering the Sabbath rest. I've made this illustration before. He said in his diary that, that he felt he lost his edge spiritually if he didn't spend four hours a day with Jesus. What would that four hours a day look like? I can guarantee he didn't have a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> or any screens in front of him. Okay? A lot of reading. A lot of praying. A lot of writing. Well, I, and I'm not calling anybody to do that, but I've been there where I know that feeling, okay? And, and, and like, there's been times when I spend long hours in prayer. How do you do it? Well, I, I'm more just, I got ADHD worse than anybody in the room here. I got a short attention span. Forget it, man. There's no way. So how, do I, how would I pull that off, okay? And that was worse when I was young, okay? Here's the trick. God, help me do this. That's all you got to do. No, I got to keep. I was talking to somebody on the phone yesterday, and they were saying, "Yeah, I want to pray. How do I pray?" I said, "Well, and this person hasn't known the Lord that long." I said, "You know, I've been doing this all my life, and about eighty percent of my prayers made up of God showed me how to do this. God, I need to know how to do this." Well, and I told this person, Paul, back to Paul. Now, this is Romans eight. This guy, who's the spiritual giant left on earth to lead the church. And this guy's got the audacity to say, we do not know how to pray. Well, if he doesn't know how to pray, what hope do we have? We're lost. Well, he's driving over the point. Don't think you know how to pray, but don't let that stop you from praying. But it's not something that, I know how to pray now. It's something that we need to do even though we don't know how to do it. We keep asking him. And we keep asking, show us, show us, show us. Okay? Next slide. Renewed. That's what it looks like. You look renewed. Do it again here. Got some nice slides here. Got them off the internet. Greater is he who is in you than he is in the world. Renewed. Wow. You know what? I used to work at Canadian Tire, and you know, my life is ups and downs with Jesus, but most of the time it's up. You know? You know I lived for God when I was a teenager, as best I could. There were guys at Canadian Tire, when I told them I did not do drugs, they did not believe me. Okay? They thought I was high all the time because I was happy. I was fooling around. I had just a spirit that was kind of domino. Now, some would say it's hyper. Okay, that's fine. But they still said, come on, you're doing drugs. Like, More than once. I wore that as a badge. Okay? I think renewal is evidence that, boy, there's somebody that's entered into the Sabbath rest because nothing can conquer you. Now, if you get a big ego about it, you know, you're ruining, you know, you're taking the Lord's name in vain. If you get a big ego about it. But please, there could be a Sabbath rest where you know you can conquer anything with Jesus, okay? You'll never believe that without renewal that comes from Sabbath rest. Never. Godly self-confidence. Get this. God, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Right? I like God. He's like, oh, I don't want a big ego. But boy, godly self-confidence. I'd like that. Well, listen, it's never permanent. You got that? It doesn't, now I've got godly self-confidence and I'll, no, it's never permanent, never. It needs renewing. It's like when you get a compliment. Okay? I got a compliment because I share the word. Great. Good till the day I die. No, no. We need compliments all the time, don't we? We need affirmation. Okay? But here's the good news. Godly self-confidence is available all the time. He's open 24 hours a day. Okay? Next slide. Psalm 122, 1, I was, look at this, how many people say this? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad, why? Because the preaching's great? Because the music's fantastic? Because everybody's together? Because people dress so nice? No! God's there! And there's no egos taken away from God of what He wants to do. Oh man, I'll go to a church like that. Okay, hard to find, hard to find. We want that here, but there's no way I would say we're like that. We're striving for it. We want that to happen. But my goodness, I don't want to be guilty of the question of the Holy Spirit. Okay? 
And you can have that in a Bible study group. But by the way, we got Bible study groups happening, okay? A Sufu leads one, Gabe Kitts leads one, no, not Gabe Kitts, yeah. yeah. A Sufu leads one, and Mar Miriam leads one, Carol's involved in one, and we got one hopefully starting up in Bar Haven that we're still praying about. Next slide. Look at this. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. You know what I get out of that? They're steadfast. What's a steadfast mind? You know when to turn the phone off. You know when to get away from the screen. You know when that voice is called. I got to get along with Jesus. I get, I, I, so we'll tell you, and I've taught, shared this with you. If I go, you know, too many days without being alone with God, I start getting like, get like goofy. You know, I got, I got to do my Bible time, man. And uh, I, 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 praise the Lord. No, I don't, I don't want to do anything outside of, you know, the strength of the Lord. Then there's uh, um, four here that we've stuck together. Regroup, rethink, reorganize. They're all kind of like the same, you know. When things aren't working, when things aren't working, check the owner's manual. Right? What's the owner's manual? Basic, basic instructions before leaving earth, Bible. Check it. Okay? God created us with a seven-day tank. It needs refueling and refilling. And recharging. And some people need more than just every seven days. You know what? Red China knows this. Communist Red China. It's basically taken over Canada already. Okay? They know this seven-day thing. Do you know that you can't go Sunday shopping in Red China? Forget it. They got stricter Sunday shopping laws with no God than we have in North America. Okay? Because they know. Okay? They know they're burning out their workers. They do. They, every worker gets one day of rest every seven days. In, an, in, the, in the most powerful atheist country in the world. Okay? Why do you think the Bible said, Jesus said, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the wicked are, 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 are wiser when it comes to finances. The children of darkness, you know, they can teach you some things. Okay. And he was talking about finances when he talked in that scripture there. If I don't have it here, you're going to get mad because I'm going to have to look it up for you. Anyway, number five, regain, regain. What does it look like? Lost territories, but regain. Sabbath rest, nothing special there. You regain. Okay? I'm going to put a picture up here. There it is. William Walcott, fantastic English artist, did this painting here. Came to New York City in 1924 to record his impressions of that skyscraper city. After a week of feeling the lifeblood of the city, he found himself one morning in an architectural office of a colleague from whom he'd worked years before in England. Now suddenly the urge, the surge to sketch came over him. He quickly said to his colleague, please, I need some paper. And seeing some paper on a desk, he said, may I have that? Yes, the architecture colleague said, that's not sketching paper. Mr. Walcott says, that's just ordinary paper. Walcott, not wanting to lose the inspiration, reached out and said, nothing is ordinary if you know how to use it. And he took the wrapping paper and made two sketches. One sold for $1,000 and the other for $500. The principle, nothing is ordinary if you know how to use it. Nothing. Look at Ari here. Look at Ari here. Come here, Ari. Ari, come here. Look at this. Look at this. You can take her a second. Nothing, nothing is ordinary if you know how to use it. Okay? Nothing is an interruption if you know how to use it. Everything, the steps of a good man are ordered to the Lord. They delight in his way. Okay? Do you want to stay up here for the rest of the time or do you want to go see some food? You want to stay here? Okay, you stay here. You stay here until you get bored. Okay? It's okay. <laughs> I feel honored that you're comfortable with me. Man, I'm alive. What a compliment, man. This will do me for another month, okay? Nothing is ordinary if you know how to use it, okay? Got black up there. It's why the early church turned Sunday into a day of celebration, okay? They never intended it to be a codified, strict, legalistic thing. It was a day when they got together and they partied. Corinthians, they partied so much that Paul had to correct them. He said, you guys are acting like drunks, man. Smart enough. Okay? That's what 1 Corinthians 11 is. And what did we do with it? Oh, we gotta do, you got to examine yourself. And yeah, it says that. He didn't say that, do that, you know, when you're coming together with the communion thing, so it's really holy. He said, you do that before you come into the room. Okay? So you don't mess up what the Holy Spirit's doing. Okay? It's a celebration. And it was such a celebration, and it was going back to Sufu, okay? It was, uh, it was such a celebration, and they had so much fun, and there was so much life of the Spirit there, and there was so much miracles going on, that the Sabbath 
day became irrelevant. Nobody even cared anymore. Would you want to do that when what Jesus has done for us? It was amazing. But the principle, the principle behind the Sabbath, they caught on to it. And it's been changing the world for 2,000 years. And it's the only hope for the world, too. This Sabbath rest that's made available to us, that we're not supposed to hoard, by the way. Every day becomes resurrection day when you live the Sabbath rest. Isaiah. Isaiah 58, 13, 14. It's the last scripture here. Hang in there, Ari. You can do it, sweetheart. Isaiah 58, 13, 14. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath. Okay, now, it's no violence to scripture in the New Testament because of the resurrection. To say, if you enter into this Sabbath rest and take its meaning and apply it to your life. If you do that instead of doing as you please on my holy day. If you call the Sabbath a delight, that Sabbath rest, if you call it a delight, and the Lord's holy day, honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please, or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land, and to feast on the inheritance of Father Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. What a great way to hear the message. Ain't the mouth of the Lord is full. <laughs> Close your eyes, okay? Close your eyes. Okay. Lord, what does John counsel? Let it lay by the wayside. Water off a duck's back. What is of you, God? God, we need this to empower us. I pray it stick to us like glue and we won't be able to forget it, God. Lord. When you rose from the dead, you changed all of history. God, when you rose from the dead, you conquered death. Not only that, Lord God, you made a way for all of us. All of us. You said in your word, Lord God, that you wish that all would come to repentance. You said, Lord, that whosoever will, whoever believes in you, they're not going to perish. They're going to have everlasting life. God, I don't think there's anybody that's going to church on Easter Sunday right now. God, I wonder whether anybody really, 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 really grasps that. We want to be a people that understand that, Lord God. Not just understand it, God, but everything we do, everything we say in life, Lord, is touched. And Lord, it is ignited. Lord, by your resurrection. And the Sabbath rest that you have brought because of the grace and wonderful relationship with Jesus Christ that we have. In Jesus' name, amen. We had three worship choruses today. We had three special songs. You would think Pastor John would back off and let it slide. No! Give me a song. None of you, I've never led this song. I've never led oh, the house said, oh yes. That means he's going to sing loud. Um, I've never led this song in a church service in my life. I've never heard it led by anybody in a church service in my life. I heard the Blackwood Brothers sing it when I was about six or seven years old. Okay? And I don't know why, but it this thing's been going on in my head all week. Okay, let's stand and we're gonna sing, okay? And if you can't sing, just fake it. Here we go. Let us have a little talk with Jesus and we'll tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. So when you feel the prayer will turn it and you know that the fire is burning, we will have a little talk with Jesus, make it right. Anybody ever, I mean, how many have heard that song before? Put your hand up. Okay, we're going to sing again. You're going to sing it twice as loud. Here we go. Let's have a little talk with Jesus and we'll tell him about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. It's when you feel the prayer go turning and you know the fire is burning. We will have a little talk with Jesus. Make it right. Now get out of here and make it right. But everybody got to make it right with okay? But spend some time visiting and, you know, making somebody feel like, oh, I'm glad I can't do it. If you can do that, you get the power to do it. Oh, yeah? Looks like the camera worked. Here, 
face crush.